So Aubrey Drake's best friend is a known alleged human trafficker, and this is really disgusting. But what's Mm. even more glaring about the situation is that Drake has a very well-documented, well-known history of uh, interacting with very young girls. And so the next clip that I want to show you guys is a clip of Drake on stage at one of his concerts with a 17-year-old girl. Oh, my God. And he's kissing on her neck. He's got her turned around. I mean, this is really inappropriate. And the craziest part about this is that he learns her age on stage uh, and continues to kiss on her. (laughs) Kiss her on the lips. And it's like if this was some guy in the crowd or some guy in the parking lot, some uh, you know older guy doing this to a minor, he'd get his ass kicked. Uh, you know what I mean? But because it's Drake and because he has all this privilege, this is he thinks that this is uh, okay, and he's gotten away with this. And I want to show you this. Yeah, because when you're super famous, you get somewhat of a god complex, and you kind of feel like you're above everybody. That's why even when he said, "What? Why are you trying to free the slaves?" I'm like, "What? What?" What are you talking about, Drake? Yes, you got a God complex. You think that you can go around, do this to women, and it's not going to reflect badly on you because you're above the law. You're Drake, you know? What I'm shocked at is that not a lot of women have came out and just, like, accused him of this because that would be... That would have been the dagger. Now he's still roaming the streets and allowed to do this but that's that's crazy what is up guys welcome to another video i hope you guys are all doing good so in this video we're going to take a deep dive into the allegations of drake apparently he's interested in uh i can't even say it but he likes girls which are can't even say it as somebody who contributed to the agitation of kenji lamar I realized I made some mishaps and I want to take accountability. You see, the video that inspired this video was when I seen Drake, Kendrick Lamar, and ASAP Rocky on stage together. But I promise you, each and every one of you are responsible for the four individuals on this stage and we will rep for y'all to the day they lay us flat on our mother. crazy how it starts guys everyone always starts off as friends then later all the shit starts to happen it's very sad if you think of it like i said this is my brother asap rocky this is my brother kendrick lamar this is my brother chasing cash it was that video that made me realize that things can still be salvaged between kendrick and drake even though kendrick has displayed like sociopathic traits in his rap battle I still think deep down, Kendrick Lamar is still a really good guy. And and just as a black man in general, bro, I don't think another black man would take pleasure in destroying another black man. And the same goes to Drake. I don't think Drake would take pleasure in any Kendrick. But the problem is what Drake represents. That is the problem. If you have a label that is trying to monopolize the music industry or rap, and Drake is a part of it, that is the problem. You can take the same argument when it comes to TikTok and the fact that America wants to ban TikTok. It's the exact same thing. They want to control information and they want to be able to curate what comes out and what doesn't. And I don't think that one specific government should have that power. So that is why people hate Drake. All right, so Aubrey Drake Graham has, in fact, been officially laid to rest by Kendrick Lamar. And it's no longer a question of who is winning or who has won the rap battle beef that we've all been enjoying over the last month or so. It is over. Even the most biased of Drake stands don't really have a lot to say after Kendrick dropped his recent, most recent diss. They not like us. Uh, that was the gnarliest banger of a diss that I may have ever heard. Kendrick really just took it there and really just viciously highlighted all of Drake's alleged dark and twisted past with underage girls. And that's basically what compelled me to make this. If you're a man out there right now and you have those allegations against you, it's very, very, very hard to shake that off. That's what I'm saying. Like what Drake should have done. It's a difficult one. It's a difficult one. Maybe he should have 
came out with like a, a post video because after hearing the lyrics in Kendrick's newest song and of course after some light detective work I was shocked at all of the grotesque information that I was able to learn about Aubrey Graham I was actually sickened so wait sickened is it at true these allegations that is and so Drake is actually one sick son of a bitch and he is done so let's start here let's start with the first clip I want to go over the internet's reaction if I'm being honest guys Videos like this make me so uncomfortable because it's so far from me as a character. That's so far, like, I don't even want to know about that shit. It's so uncomfortable. Action to this rap beef, or more specifically, to Kendrick's newest They Not Like Us. And so this clip is going to be Fantano's reaction. Now, Fantano is a famous music critic known for sort of being hard on a lot of artists and for giving unbiased, unapologetic opinions, even on artists that he is a huge fan of. He's, over the years, given consistently objective reviews, and his reaction uh, to They Not Like Us was an unbiased one. And he actually held Drake's funeral and delivered a beautiful eulogy, and I thought it was really good, and I wanted everyone to be aware of this, so let's uh, roll the first clip. They were here to remember a man. Some may not say a great man. One of the biggest uh, rap men in the music industry of all time. <coughs> and he had a very long and storied and celebrated career. His meat was glazed. Mm. Absolutely glazed by many an Oviho, all of whom will be completely shattered. If, if, if you know any Ovihos in your life, send them your condolences. Check in on them. Buy them a Nintendo store gift card. But today we're here to <coughs> uh, give a bit of a, a musical eulogy to one of the greats. What one, one would say... Uh, a member of the Big Three, or what at one time was known as the Big Three, Aubrey Graham Drake, a.k.a. BBL Drizzy. Drake was, as many of you know, recently diagnosed with a terminal case of back-to-back-to-back. -to -back -to -back. Uh, Kendrick Lamar hit the boy with a response. And then another response. So Anthony Fantano, the internet's busiest music nerd, is giving a eulogy for Drake, meaning that this is fucking done. It's over. Drake has passed on. His career is being laid to rest. And while he's not the final say, he's not. I disagree with that take because I don't think that Drake is done. I think that his reputation is ruined. Will he get the, the same collaborations as he has gotten before? I don't think so. I don't think that he's... I think he's gonna be a little more isolated from hip hop. But then again, you're always gonna have these younger artists which are on the come up and they're looking for a look. So Drake can always work with them. But the older artists which are more established, like the Rick Rosses and all of these other artists, I think they won't really wanna collaborate with Drake like the the final authority in the music business like the music uh world fantano does have some authority here okay and so i want to show you his live reaction uh to kendrick's new diss and he, here it is people hi monster on the beat ho bebo in rap nigga he a free throw man damn carla amber lambs tell him please bro nail a nigga to the cross he walk around like tiso what's up fantano is thoroughly enjoying this diss the knee diss tano is loving this look at this he's loving this diss which means that it's fucking good and that kendrick wins i hate you like i'm young you better not have a go to sell black one to any bitch that talk to him and they in love just make sure you hide your little sister from him <laughs> <laughs> so that was quite a reaction and the reactions are coming in from all different corners of the internet people are giving their opinions even penguin z zero charlie moist critical gave his opinion and this guy fucking sucks he doesn't give opinions on anything that's not completely safe he doesn't take sides in anything unless it's like the overwhelming majority is on. He'll take the overwhelming majority popular vote even penguin z zero is siding with ken I was looking at the views of his uh, his latest video, right? And uh, this is the same plight which Kanye West has with Drake. You can see that something is not right with, with Drake's views. 
like Kendrick Lamar released a a nuclear weapon yesterday right not like us and that song within a few hours maybe was at two maybe three million views right Drake's latest song right now it's already at five five million views and I've been looking very closely when it comes to Drake's like YouTube channel I think that Drake I think they tamper a little bit with Drake's views because there was a video which he released once and that one got taken away and then he had to repost it so it, I don't know the first 48 hours it got like I don't know maybe 8 million views or it got like a crazy amount of views then they took that video away then they reposted it and then it only got what I don't know maybe like a million views so I think he's fiddling a little bit with with the views there just so the narrative can go out the fact that oh Drake didn't really lose when it comes to the numbers but Kendrick is blowing Drake out of the water when it comes to the numbers. But Kendrick was coming out here with some fucking chutzpah. This guy hates Drake more than anyone else, it seems. And I don't know, I just really think his track was probably the stronger one. Even though Drake's was really solid, I think Kendrick still came out here and did a better diss. Again, I know no one gives a fuck about my perspective on- I really thought Thank that Kendrick you. had the stronger of the two disses, although Drake had a strong- Shut the fuck up. You're going with the safe vote again. This guy never has a hot take on anything. Okay, it's so annoying. But I just want to point this out because this shows that he's uh, going with the obvious, which is that Kendrick wins. I hope I'm making sense here. So Drake fucking lost. And we're going to look at now we're going to look at uh, uh, Rick Ross's My reaction. God. He's very excited about what Kendrick needs to do right now is literally go on a world tour and just blast this one. He knows that this is it. This is the end. And of course, Rick Ross and Drake have been beefing for some time now. They've been going back and forth. And so this goes uh, up as a W in Rick Ross's column hmm. because this marks the defeat of his enemy, Drake. And so Rick Ross is going to give his uh, comment, his reaction. Look at this. Hold on, 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 BBL Drizzy, I'm at the pool party, and they just called you a petty. You a little yeah, chomo? Oh, my God. They backed it up at the... Oh, my God, guys. This is nasty. Just that song gives Kendrick Lamar the edge. But that's the, that's the thing. That's why I'm saying, like, Drake has never created a euphoria. He has never created a song like this. Not like us. He's unifying the mob and they're going against Drake right now. That's why I think that it doesn't really matter what Drake does. He can come out with five, six, seven, eight songs right now. But he's, he's not going to be able to shake off the allegations. Ooh, okay, so here we go. We're going to get into some shit here. So, uh, and I want to address this uh, BBL Drizzy stuff. Rick Ross went through a weight loss transformation where he lost like 500 pounds. And so when Drake lost a bunch of weight and started flaunting his abs and stuff like that, Rick Ross made an accusation that Drake had liposurgery or something. I, I, I'm not really, I'm too versed on that, but um, I think it's very interesting because it is consistent. As you can see here, uh, Rick Ross went through weight loss, but, and he had um, facial changes. You know what I mean? You lose weight in all areas of your body, not just the midsection. So when Rick Ross lost a bunch of weight, he lost weight in his face, in his head. But when Drake lost weight, he had zero, I mean, seem, to me, it doesn't look like he's lost any weight in the face, which is consistent with having fat removed uh, locally in certain areas. So I wanted that covered, but what I really want to get into is this pedo stuff. So Kendrick Lamar <laughs> really puts on blast all of the allegations Megan's that get law. brushed over because of Drake's celebrityness. Drake openly fancies talking to underage girls, and this is not any type of buddy that one is wild i'm not saying this i'm just reacting to it remember i haven't said that drake is i'm just saying that it looks really really bad 
Ooh. Yo, he's actually a sick bastard. Why you trolling like a bitch? Ain't you tired? Trying to strike a chord, and it's probably a minor. <laughs> Jesus. And at this point, this is beyond any Ooh. allegations. Itchy. This is actually scientifically proven facts that we're about to go over here. And I'd like to start with a lyric. So this is Kendrick Lamar's. Uh, this is a piece of the song that caught my eye or my ear, I should say. This is about Baca. Now, and Baca got a weird case. Why is he around? Certified lover boy, certified pedophiles. Wah, 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 wah. So I heard this line and I was like, a certified what a file? What? That's insane. So I did some digging and it didn't take long for me to find this YouTube channel that I want everyone to go find. I want everyone to watch this documentary in its entirety. It's a beautiful piece. It's a wonderful piece of documentation that really outlines. I mean, it really does a great job of exposing Drake. And I'm going to be taking pieces of that, but I want to get full credit, full disclosure. This is uh, Internet Oddities, I think it's called or something, something like that. But this guy uh, does a phenomenal job and we're going to learn about Baca. Look at this. Celebrating the release of Baca Not Nice, a rapper, friend, and member of Drake's record label, OVO, following a stint in jail for allegedly forcing a 22-year-old woman into prostitution, a weapons charge, and human trafficking. The now deleted post read, something in the air... It's good to isolate yourself. Don't be hanging around with a lot of people. You don't know what these people have done. That's the that's the thing which I don't understand about Drake, right? Why are you inviting the devil in? L he literally just could be, I'm the guy from Canada. I focus on my shit. I'm creating this, this brand. He could be a Michael Jordan. But for some reason, he has to try to bring the devil in. You don't have to do that. Look at me right now, right? I'm focused, putting in the work. You have to be very careful who you align yourself with, who you're standing next to, who you're taking pictures with. Very, very careful. You can take a picture with somebody, yeah, oh, this is a fan, but don't constantly hang out with them. Today, a lot of good things happening at once, but this one means the most. Been waiting 11 months, Baca finally home. So Aubrey Drake's best friend is a known alleged human trafficker, and this is really disgusting, but what's mm. even more glaring about the situation is that Drake has a very well-documented, well-known history of uh, interacting with very young girls. And so the next clip that I want to show you guys is a clip of Drake on stage at one of his concerts with a 17-year-old girl. Oh, my God. And he's kissing on her neck. He's got her turned around. I mean, this is really inappropriate. And the craziest part about this is that he learns her age on stage uh, and continues to kiss on her. Kiss her on the lips. And that, it's like that, if that, this that, was that, some that, guy that, that, in the crowd or some guy in the parking lot, some uh, you know older guy doing this to a minor, he'd get his ass kicked. Um, you know what I mean? But because it's Drake and because he has all this privilege, this is he thinks that this is uh, okay, and he's gotten away with this. And I want to show you this. Yeah, because when you're super famous, you get somewhat of a god complex, and you kind of feel like you're above everybody. That's why even when he said, "What? Why are you trying to free the slaves?" I'm like, "What? What?" What are you talking about, Drake? Yes, you got a God complex. You think that you can go around, do this to women, and it's not going to reflect badly on you because you're above the law. You're Drake, you know? What I'm shocked at is that not a lot of women have came out and just, like, accused him of this because that would, be, that would have been the dagger. Now he's still roaming the streets and allowed to do this but that's that's crazy immediately mm. So he asks her how old she is uh, as if to imply that she looks suspiciously young and maybe he shouldn't be doing this. Why would he ask her her age unless he was suspicious about her being old enough to kiss on, you know what I mean, as a grown man? And then he goes on and makes it quite obvious that he's still physically attracted to her even though she's under the age of 18 mm. and continues to kiss on her and stuff like that knowing that she's underage. That's wild. That's what I'm saying. Like, there are certain people which have done this, right? They've been doing this to kids. 
I understand why why that this track is getting so much momentum because I'm like those people deserve to be shot if I'm being honest if you have slept with a I don't even want to say it but if you have done that to a it's a different thing when they're 18 years old because then they get to decide they get to give you consent that's a totally different thing if this girl was 18 I'd, I would say hey I probably wouldn't go after an 18 year old but then again legally he's allowed to do it but a 17 year old and he's doing it on stage that's the thing which I don't understand the hubris that this guy has whew. Why you look like that? You're thick. Whew, Drake, my guy. You're <laughs> you're so thirsty for it. You don't even you don't even care. You you're so hungry for it. That's you can't even control your urges. You you want to go for those little kids. Oh my god, bro, don't say that. Oh, do not say that. You don't you don't know if you should feel guilty or not, but you had fun. If a person is comfortable enough to do this in front of so many people, right? Talking to a 17-year-old like that and you do like in front of everybody, kissing her, like groping her, then 9 times out of 10 he has probably done this in the comfort of his home. Because if you can do it in public, 100% you're doing it behind closed doors. Maybe it's not public, maybe no one has caught on to it yet, but you're comfortable enough to do this. I would understand if you were hiding it and it's this urge that you have. That's a crazy thing, right? But he is doing it right in front of our eyes right in front of our eyes and that's what I'm saying like there's something with the music industry there's something very demonic with the music industry because imagine these are these are like the the let's say the biggest corporations in the world right and they are privy to this information they know what Drake has done what he hasn't done they, they got all the information on Drake why would they allow this to happen? It's wrong, Rick. It's wrong, Rick. Mm. That's a bad one. So that oh. was virtually insane. And I want to point out that there are fans of Drake out there that are defending this behavior. Whoa, he kissed her on stage? Guys. All the feminists and everybody should be on him right now. Stop listening to his music. They should be on him right now. I want to show you Poetic Jala defending this very thing on Rockstar 2800's live stream. Look a at this. video on YouTube with Drake on, on stage with a 17-year-old girl and talking about why do you have to be Canada. this cute? Why do you got to do that? Yada, yada, yada. Like and he that. was 20 I'm, years old in Canada where the age of consent is 16. He was fuck all that age of consent. Make it okay. Nigga, that was a little ass girl. And he was 20 you years old. was a little was girl. You're saying the age and then you're like, I don't want to go to jail. He nigga, was wait, 40. What? She was Listen, I understand being disrespectful. So Poetic Jala is defending Drake for doing this, and it's pretty funny because he's not even, he doesn't even have the correct information. Drake was 23, and he was not in Canada. He was in Colorado. She was a 17-year-old kid, a high school student, and he was kissing on her and putting, he said that he liked the feel of her breasts against, I don't even like saying that. That's disgusting. It is and disgusting. Another thing, I don't remember her giving consent. I don't, th I mean, she went on stage, sure, but I don't think she, I don't think Drake asked her if it was okay if he kissed on her and all this stuff. They can't give you consent if they are 17 and the age, the age that you can approach them is 18. Then they're not giving you consent. So he did something, he groped her. That's what Drake did. Like, Drake is the 
the next one which you're crucifying i'm like i'm i'm all for it like let's let's crucify drake if that's what the mob is doing right now listen i'm a part of the mob <laughs> i love the mob i want to hang out with the mob if we're crucifying that guy and that's what we're doing today listen i'm gonna be there and i'm gonna be in the mob and i'm gonna watch i don't think that he got consent okay mm. so even if she was old enough to give consent which she was not it, let's say that this was in canada i don't think that this would fly in canada either this wasn't she didn't give consent he didn't ask her for her consent and she didn't give it to him so just standing there frozen in shock means that that's implied consent i don't think so so Jala is one sick son of a bitch uh. for defending this. So I just wanted to mention that and point that out for everyone. Uh, and so now I want to get back to Internet Oddities documentary about the uh, Drake stuff. He's going to pull some lyrics and stuff that are very eye-opening and very glaring. And he's going to talk about all the minors and stuff that Drake uh, finds himself in texting relationships oh with. Oh my God. 29-year-old Drake was spotted eating dinner with 18-year-old Haley Bieber in West Hollywood. Due to their allegedly flirty interaction and Drake- Okay, but he's- There we have to- we have to be honest. We have to keep it a buck fifty. If she's 18 or if she's 19, she gets to decide. She gets to give her consent. That's how it works wearing a matching H necklace, rumors of them dating began circulating, with Entertainment Tonight even alleging that the two hooked up at Drake's Memorial Day party. She'd known Drake for around four years oh. at this point, meaning that a 25-year-old Drake first met Haley when she was just 14. What does a 25-year-old man have in common with a 14-year-old? And wouldn't it feel weird to date someone you have always known to be a child? Okay, I didn't know that. Let's crucify him right after they legally become an adult absolutely absolutely that is really weird that he's like friends with these little girls and then when they turn 18 he's out to dinner with them i think that that's pretty pedophilic uh it, you know in my opinion that is and now internet oddities is going to go over some lyrics this guy's good drake would release a song titled jaded featuring the line we could have waited i wasn't russian differences in ages you're old enough but you're still a baby and two months later in september 14 year old millie bobby brown oh. would attend the emmys oh, oh. and mentioned in a red carpet interview that her and 32 year old drake text after meeting each other in australia after he invited her to his concert and that their conversations mostly consist of drake giving her her boy advice uh so he's tech so drake is texting the little girl from stranger things and giving her boy advice what she's 14. a 14 year old mm. millie bobby brown was texting drake who's a 31 year old mm. man and shouldn't be texting any minor that he misses them it's already <laughs> clear that their relationship is uncomfy but as the interview continues it only gets worse oh, he's my. coming to atlanta so i'm definitely gonna go and see him i'm so excited yeah you and drake that's yeah. awesome <laughs> so at this point, like, Millie, brother, the black guy's like, you and Drake, that's awesome. You texting a 45 year old man, that's awesome. Okay, he's not 45, he's what, 30, 36, 38, I don't know. Oof. That's wild, my guy. Why don't just, I don't understand why people are not just like, be a boring guy. Switch on the television, watch your series, or read your book. I was reading my book uh I, i'm gonna go and take a picture here like be a tourist or do something how can you have that much money that much money if i had even the even like 15 percent of what drake has i'll be in cabo i'll be on the jet skis i'll be on the four wheelers he already had plans to go and hang out oh with a my. man who was twice her age. Mm. There's no blame to put on Millie, but Drake should know that this is not all right. And it was weird to see them posting pictures oh of each other on social media. Millie captioned a photo of them together with a heart. And actually Drake sent over some merch to Millie before his album dropped back in 2018. So they obviously have some type of bond here. Let's go back to that interview because the reporter asked Millie, what type of advice does Drake give a 14 year old girl what advice does he give you like what does he say uh about boys he helps me what yeah yeah okay you gotta stop bobby <laughs> if i'm drake i'm like ah, ah. 
It's like bro, Drake is panicking right now. It's like, oh, what are you saying? <laughs> delete! Oh, delete! Oh, delete it! Oh, delete! Delete! They're they're saved, my guy. Shouldn't the FBI be looking into this? Whew. Damn. 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 <laughs> this ain't what you want. This ain't what you want. Yeah, he's great. He's wonderful. I love What's him. His advice with boys? You know, that stays in the text messages. <laughs> Am I the only one who thinks mm. it's incredibly weird yeah. that this grown man is giving this young girl advice about boys like if it was like a little bit of like a, i don't know like maybe because uh. you know drake was kind of a child star and maybe he's been trying to you know help and protect mm -hmm. these other child stars mm -hmm. but it doesn't seem like they're talking about you know i don't listen be jennifer lopez love her hate her she is a bitch and that's it i hate that girl. that's fine if people in the future say i met jambo davidson he's an asshole i hate him that that's fine that's okay but don't do that. Don't like, oh, she's, don't. Even if Bobby texted Drake first, Drake should have just been, hey, I don't want people thinking that I'm preying on you or anything. The question which I have right now is where's the parents? And why are you allowing your daughter to be texting old men? Like what? Being a child star or being in Hollywood, but talking about Millie's relationship with boys. Mm. Millie did take to social media to clear up some rumors, but she wrote, why you gotta make a lovely friendship your headline? You guys are weird. Mm. For real. I'm lucky to have people in the business extend their time to help me further my career and offer their wisdom and guidance, which that's what I thought he would have been doing. But you told us that he was talking to you about oh, boys. boys and that you guys were texting. I miss you with each other. So it doesn't really add up. Why are you talking to a 14 year old? I don't give a damn. I don't care what you guys are talking about. She can't consent. Uh, let's hear about the, his history with Billie Eilish, another uh, little 17-year-old Billie Eilish sat down for an interview with Vanity Fair and revealed that one of the most famous people in her phone is Drake. She would go on to say that Drake is like the nicest dude I've ever spoken to. I mean, I've only like texted him, but he's so nice. Like, he does not need to be nice. You know what I mean? So Drake is extremely over-the-top nice to these <laughs> girls and he's texting. Very cool, very interesting, very... Uh, Whoa. Very weird and gross. So uh, let's hear some lyrics. This guy's got lyrics to go over. Look at this. This is fun. Savage's song, Mr. Right Now, saying the line, Yeah, said she want to fuck to some oh SZA. Oh my God. Wait, because I used to date SZA back in 08. In 2008, Drake would have been 22, and SZA would have just been 17. In a tweet, SZA confirmed that they did date, but insisted that their dynamic didn't involve anything underage or creepy. 35-year-old Drake released an album titled Certified Lover Boy with a song titled Poppy's Home, featuring the line, Sierra Canyon parking lot looking like a Magic City parking lot. This turned heads. A Sierra Canyon is a private school in California that offers classes for pre-K to 12th grade students. And Magic City is a strip club in Atlanta. As the album contains 21 songs, and Drake was beefing with Kanye West at the time, it's not surprising that this single line managed to be overlooked. Looks like here you wanted to come here and have sex with a 15 year old. <laughs> no, no, wait. Jesus. Oh my God, bro. Don't, don't do that to the guy. Don't do that to my boy. Oh no, he's not my boy. I'm, I mean, just like, don't do that to, to the Canadian guy. Whew. <sighs> can you shake this off? Can, can Drake shake this off? Because the way that I look at it, it's... <sighs> he's done. He's done. And the, these these little memes that they're gonna do, like, cause I know how nefarious people are on the internet. If they just, if they just see you bleed, they're like sharks. If they just see you, they, they can sniff the blood from a mile away. If they just, oh my God, somebody's bleeding. Bam, they get those black eyes and you're done. That's what I'm saying. Like Drake does not even understand that he's, he's done. Right now he's still like, okay, okay, let me just, release this track and they're, they're not gonna catch on to me, but 
we already we can already sniff it out in the water all all that needs to happen right now is one girl has to come out one girl and she just needs to make some shit up like oh drake uh, drake was texting me i met up with him like that's it and he's done and it will happen it will maybe not today maybe not a year from now but it will happen because that's how it starts it's like r kelly oh that's weird oh my god that's <laughs> what you did that with with that 17 year old oh you married a 14 year old like age is just a number Aaliyah. It's just, that's how it starts and then it becomes this bigger and bigger thing now they're referring to him as the epstein damn damn the canadian epstein that bbl drizzy the canadian epstein and the p word and it doesn't help his case the fact that he came out with just a song right now where he's like yeah because if i was guilty i would have been arrested no no not really i was thinking about it though like yeah no so drake's a weirdo and kendrick has put it on blast and i'm wondering why drake would get into a beef with anyone when he's got all this stuff on his name that can be brought up easily it's all over the goddamn internet. And so Drake is actually a dumbass. He should have just kept it low pro and just, you know, continue. Because God put in a cheat code in us. This is the thing which I've noticed. And I was, cause I was watching Charlemagne and he also has his allegations. It came out that he raped a girl, but, <laughs> which is wild. But anyway, Charlemagne told on himself. And that is the cheat code which God has put in, in into us. Like sometimes you just give a person enough rope and they'll hang themselves. Like Charlemagne didn't have to say all of that, but he's like, yeah, you know, like when I was young, I used to give girls Spanish fly. Spanish fly is like a drug to, to make them all like groggy so you can take easier advantage of them. He said that on his podcast with Andrew Schultz and Andrew was like, oh, I'm laughing about it. That's why I'm like, listen, guys, you got to be very, very careful nowadays. Let me tell you a story. I was dating this girl. This was six months ago or maybe six months. Yeah, six months ago, right? And we're hanging out and bro, I'm, I'm really interested in this girl, right? And... I want to go in for the move, but then I'm like, I don't know if I should. She's, she's giving me hot and cold, right? So I remember we sat down, we're at the hotel room and I was like super corny with it. And I was just like, Hey, is it okay if I give you a kiss? And she started laughing. She was like, Oh my God, you're such a corny guy. And I'm like, listen, <laughs> listen. Nowadays, you have to be very, very careful. I know it's corny, I know like, but nowadays you have to be very careful. You have to ask, you have to probably record it as well. Hey, can you give me consent? Is that okay? And that's something that I've started doing right now. Because people can make shit up about you. Oh, I was hanging out with him and I felt super uncomfortable. Record it, take the, phone and say is it okay if i give you a kiss do you give me your consent do that rather that you're a corny dude and people laugh at you and then people making shit up about you because have you guys noticed something the corny guy never gets allegations the corny like the guy which is like super corny oh can i kiss you can i touch you over here can i he never gets allegations so is the the cool guy the the guy which has hubris the drakes those are the guys which actually get these allegations on them. Now, to be fair to Drake, oh, I can't even be fair because the video is there. It's damning. All, just that interaction says that he is because he did it in front of everybody. With the Canadian pop songs, to get into a back and forth disc with uh, a, mm. a real boy like uh, Kendrick, like that, 
I don't know why he would do that. I think that he just committed career suicide at this point. Mm. Because had this this song, this uh, They Not Like Us by Kendrick Lamar, if this song hadn't come out, I would never have felt compelled to look into this stuff. Mm. It would have never been on my radar, you see. But because of Drake uh, thinking that he was the top dog with this rap shit, that's what, I mean, this is career suicide. And if we're going to keep it a stack, uh, uh, lyrically, Kendrick Lamar just destroyed, this is uh, career homicide as mm. well. Kendrick killed Drake with this, figuratively speaking. And it's so obvious, it's such a huge W that even Drake's biggest stands are throwing in the towel and admitting that this was the end. Oh my God, and I love Drake. Everybody knows it's my favorite rapper of all time. It will never change until, I don't know, I don't even think another rapper could, could, could Passing in my mind. <laughs> <laughs> a fucking game? Uh. Bro. 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 It's like this thing is in my chat. It's like, it's like he's watching my stream. It's like we can't even get a moment mm. to like, yo, hey, now nah, Drake dropped a good one here. I know we don't get to let these drop it again. So DJ Academics is really going through it. And as we all know, as we all are very well aware of, he has accusations of underage girl stuff too. Ooh. And I think that's probably why he loves Drake so much. Because Drake, they share the same interests. You know what I mean? And so DJ Academics basically knows that Drake is done. And so does Poetic Jala. Poetic Jala knows that this was a huge L for Drake and that Kendrick won. I'd like to show you what Jala has to say. Um, oh, that's an... Um, again, I can't hate. It was a good diss record. Tell Drake if he, if he watches too, bro. Listen, it, both sides have dropped. Let's end it here. It's good. Oh my god, Jala is so stupid if he thinks Drake watches his stuff, first of all. Second of all, this is the end of the reaction. This is like an eight minute long video. He thinks that Drake sat through this whole thing watching him listen to Kendrick's song. I can actually say with 100% certainty that Drake does not even know who Jala is and does not did not watch this video and does not watch any of his stuff Flacco. that Jala thinks that he does. That's how stupid he is. And again, I'd like to point out that he defends people's actions. He defends uh, DJ Academics. He defends the 16 for his allegations. They love to uh, mm -hmm, cite mm -hmm, the mm -hmm, laws mm -hmm. of the age of consent in Canada. This is how the 16 justified his actions in the past. And this is what Flacco's doing for Drake right now. I mean, Flacco is uh, a sick son of a bitch. And uh, I'm so glad that I can actually include that in this. 